48 chefs from across the UK are putting their reputations on the line in a bid to become professional MasterChef champion. Another six hopefuls are competing to impress. Judge Greg Wallace, renowned chef Monica Galletti, and Michelin starred Marcus Waring. This is one of the most significant things I've ever done in my career. I'm super excited to be here today. This is where I test myself. I don't want to mess this up now that the time's come. I think I'm ready for the competition, but whenever can you be ready for a competition like this? These chefs are going to have to hold their nerve and really show us something special. The risks are high, but so are the rewards. Chefs, we've got six chefs outside waiting to start their MasterChef competition. First of all, they've got to face the skills test. Three of them, Marcus, are going to face a test set by you. Monica, three of them are going to face your skills test. What are you going to ask them to do? I would like our chefs to prepare and cook these beautiful razor clams and serve it with a sauce with tomatoes, capers and shallots. I have no idea how you prepare a razor clam. I hope our chefs know. How long are they going to get for this? Our chefs have 15 minutes. Show me, please, how this is done. So, most importantly is rinsing them first, just to get rid of any excess sand. So, if they don't rinse them properly, we could get gritty clams? Yes. I think there's a big possibility that these three chefs may never have used braised clams before. Really? Mm. So, I'm just chopping up some garlic. I have uh, a shallot here as well. And this is just to sort of cook the, the razor clams in. A couple of bay leaves, some thyme, a sprig of rosemary. Got our razor clams. Okay. Go into the pan. Splash of white wine. And you're just going to cook it for like 30 seconds, no more. I've never cooked razor clams. If our chefs haven't, is there any real do's and don'ts? You overcook these and they're going to get really tough like rubber. To cook a razor clam and keep it tender, that is a skill in its own right. I've strained my razor clams through a muslin cloth and a colander, OK, so it's nice and, and clear, cos I want to use a little bits of this cooking liquor in the sauce. Are there any bits of this clam I need to remove? Yes. You can see here, this is the main part that we keep. You can also sort of cut this piece off here. Uh, and after that, this has a lot of sand and it's the innards of it, the main parts that you want to take for these. OK. Definitely don't use that black bit. <clears throat> no, no, no. I think if a chef has never cooked razor clams before, they could struggle with what bit you can eat and what you can't eat. And I think it would be such a shame if, if our chefs used all of the razor clam in the dish, cos we couldn't eat the dish. So I'm just going to cut my shallots and, and prepare the tomato, which is all going into the sauce. So, in with the chopped shallots first. Garlic goes in. Got some butter. Okay. I'm going to use some capers. Just a touch of this cooking liquor through it. Tomatoes go in. Parsley. If you boil and boil and boil this sauce, the tomatoes break down, the razor clams will become so tough. And I think sometimes the simplest things in cookery are the hardest to get right. And that's it. It's done. Those clams take no cooking at all, do they? The more you cook these, the tougher they're going to get. That's it. That's my razor clam dish served with a tomato, caper and shallot sauce. Very elegant. This looks simple, but it's a very, very difficult dish to do. I really hope they've got a gentle touch. Mm. Should we get them in? Mm. Yeah. Rhiannon is a 20-year-old chef de partie in a fine dining hotel restaurant in Lincolnshire. I came here three years ago as an apprentice. 
and I absolutely love it, it's amazing. I think pastry was my passion, it was sort of more of a hobby. When I started work I found out that doing it for a work is almost not a job to me, so I enjoy it so much. I love pastry. I've only just started my career but I'm feeling fresh, trying to take everything in, get a load of knowledge. The thing that excites me the most is cooking for the judges. Just having their reaction, just having the smile on their face when they taste your food would be incredible. Rhiannon, welcome to Master Chef. Thank you very you much. You look like a chef. You look like you mean business. I do mean business. Oh, good, <laughs> good. Because this is the skills test, and this one was set by Monica. Rhiannon, I would like you to prepare and cook the razor clams, serving it with a sauce made with the ingredients in front of you. How does that sound? Good. Yeah? Yeah. Clean razor clams before? I haven't, no. You've cleaned uh, shellfish before, though? I have, yes. Yeah, mussels, what have you. Yep. Yeah, very similar. Okay. You will have 15 minutes. Good luck. So what are we doing there? Just rinsing off the uh, dirt from the clams. What sort of sections have you worked on? Um, so I'm mainly pastry based. Oh, But I'm cool. trying to push myself to... Learn razor clams. <laughs> Learn razor clams, exactly. You've had five minutes, OK? You've got, you've got ten minutes left. How long have you been a chef for? Uh, three years in total now. Yeah. Enjoying it? Loving it. Loving it. How will you know if those rosa clams are cooked properly? Um, just by the touch, really. So, to me, they feel fine. So is it just to finish your sauce now and serve? Yes, yeah. OK. Five minutes left, chef, please. What's the plan with the clams? So I'm thinking of putting my sauce into the clams and then finishing off the just seasoning of the clam. Any trimming? No? Maybe. That wasn't a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> I was just asking. No. Are you done? I'm ready. We had 30 seconds left. OK. Thank you. Razor clams are full of sand. You know, so rinsing them one by one under a tap is not going to remove all that grit and that sand. You need to get them into a bowl of water, toss them around. You have served them with everything intact. So you, you've got the intestinal chute, you've got all the sandbags in there. And actually, when you put some on here, you can still see all the sand on here that hasn't come out of, of the razor clam. So that's not edible. The razor clam has had too much cooking and it's gone a little chewy and rubbery. You've got a sauce that's got big chunks of tomato, big chunks of shallot, and taste mostly of wine. There's no stock in there. You threw the stock away. This obviously hasn't worked because you just didn't know how to do it. The best way to describe what you have here, Rhiannon, is that it's like cooking a whole fish with its gills and its guts still in it. That's the equivalent of what you've done there. I like the fact you didn't know what you were doing but still gave it a shot. You soldiered on and got through and you gave us something. OK, it's not great. It shows a lack of experience. But I think there's something about you and you'll be able to pick up as you go. You're going to have to. Rhiannon, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next round. Off you go, Chef. Thank you. I found that hard, very hard. I do think I'm quite resilient. I think I can bring this back now. Uh, it's not the best start, but we'll see what I can do now. Next to face Monica's test is 20-year-old Avraj, who currently works as a chef de partie in a three-rosette restaurant in Yorkshire. I've been here two and a half years, came straight out of college. I'd say fine dining 
High Standard Kitchen is the best way for a chef to learn. Ever since I was about 13, I've always wanted a star. I've never wanted nothing but the best. I don't think I'd be able to work in an office. You know, it just gets so bored of just typing away all day. Kitchen, at least you're doing something new every day. I'd say I'm fairly comfortable across the whole kitchen. I'm prepared to do whatever's needed. So yeah, I'd say I'm ready. Avraj, what I would like you to do is prepare and cook the razor clams, served with a sauce using some of the ingredients in front of you. Yep. You have 15 minutes. Off you go. You've cooked razor clams before, Avraj? Yeah, we had them on the menu about six months ago. Brilliant! And why are you a chef? When I was young, I'd be in the kitchen with my granddad. And uh, whilst he was cooking, he'd be showing me things. How old were you when you started cooking with Grandad? Uh, I was about eight. The clams are in the pan cooking. Yep. What's, the, what's your plan? I'm going to do uh, just simple poached uh, razor clams. And then I'm going to go for uh, like a tomato sauce using the capers. Halfway. Tell me what it is you're, you're doing here, please. Uh, I'm just trimming off the bottom part of the clam, of which uh, has all the poo. What have you got left to do? Uh, I've just got to start plating. Right, your time's up. I'm pleased you've just trimmed the, the edible parts because anything else would have been full of sand. Because you need to remember to really rinse those through before we cook them. You've cooked those clams well. They're a good texture. They're not overcooked, not undercooked. You've cooked them. Your sauce is a bit chunky. You flavoured it, you seasoned it. It's not particularly refined, but this is not bad. I don't think much of your sauce. A tomato skin, roughly chopped tomatoes, roughly chopped parsley, roughly chopped shallots, but the razor clam it is nice and tender. For a young chef, it's a pretty good start here. You know, you show a lot of potential in what uh, you've given us so far. Avraj, thank you, chef. <laughs> Off you go. Thank you. I think I rushed into it a bit too much. I'm going to bring this back. I'm very confident with my signature dish. Originally from Israel, 33-year-old Aviv... Hello. 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 ..is now head chef at a bar restaurant in North London. I became a chef out of a necessity to make money. I was a punk rock musician. Came to London around 12 years ago with my band. We kind of suck, we didn't really make it. <laughs> so, uh, as you can see, uh, that's not my profession anymore. So I started working at a few gastro pubs around Camden. My style of cooking is, is a Viv style of cooking. There is no like boundaries or limits to what I do. I do keep everything in the sense of like more sharing, kind of tapasy, happy cuisine. I am really excited actually to compete. I would love to bring some pride, you know, for uh, my cuisine, for Israel. Achieving world recognition, that's what I want to do. You prepared razor clams before? Never in my life. OK. Well, 15 minutes, Aviv, off you go. Yes. You got a bottle of wine in there, chef? Yes. So I'm not very confident with this kind of food, but uh, I'm going to do my best.
What is the most important thing when, when cooking clams? Probably not to overcook them, not to make them like very uh, chewy and, uh, and stiff. You have five minutes left. So now what are you going to do with those clams? Right. I'm going to trim them off the side because these are probably not nice to eat. Good boy. And just like pass them a bit on the on the J cloth. Got one minute to go. Right. You done? We oui. just in the nick of time. Rule number one with any shellfish, you need to wash them uh, thoroughly before we cook them. I like that you opened the clams up and then noticed uh, the sandbags in it that you shouldn't keep on there, so you, you trimmed them off. That's a very good thing to do, especially since you've not prepared them before. The clams are cooked, they're cooked properly. Your sauce is very, very salty. And I noticed you didn't taste it at all. I've not tasted it, Aviv, because I don't particularly like the cross-contamination. You're rubbing them with a cloth to take off what is effectively the slime and the guts from the bag that you removed. Shellfish is dangerous, and you need to be very careful how you work with it. We've got a big round coming up. It's your own food. Personally, I'm looking forward to that, OK? We will see you then. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Aviv. Off you go. It's insanely hard. It's insanely hard for anyone, I mean, to be under that pressure. They found the comments very helpful. These kind of things build you up. I mean, I'm going to do it better next time. Right, we're well underway. Three chefs have attempted your skills test with varying results. Marcus, your turn. What are you going to get them to do? Pan fried calves liver, Bordelais sauce served on toasted brioche. Bordelais sauce, sauce from Bordeaux, right? Yep. Red wine. Yep, and finished with bone marrow. How long are you going to give them? 15 minutes. This is the kind of dish I would order. Ah, oh, delicious. So this dish is really all going to be about getting the sauce underway. So the bacon lardons first. So you want all of that flavour to come out of the bacon before any other ingredient goes into the pan. Gotcha. I'm just going to slice up some garlic. Now I'm going to put the garlic and the shallot into the pan. Just want to put a bay leaf in there, some thyme leaves. Brioche onto the little griddle pan, because this is what the calves liver is going to sit on. Brioche is a bread that has so much butter content and it's coloured up very quickly. So our chefs need to be very careful when they do this. Brandy goes in. Crikey. OK, alcohol's burnt off. I'm also just going to put in a little splash of port. We're playing with big, big flavour here, aren't we? Now for the red wine from Bordeaux. Any classically trained chef is going to know a border laser, right? Absolutely. What we want to do now is turn the heat full on and let that reduce right down so it's really nice and sticky. And what we can do is prepare our other ingredients. Brioche comes off. I'm going to pop it straight into the oven because I want the brioche to just slightly dry out a little bit. If I left the brioche as it was, it would just go all soggy and wet and just break out into the dish. The sauce has come right down. And then we just pour a little bit of our reduced stock onto there. Just turn the heat right down. You haven't left that sauce since you started. Your focus has been completely and utterly on that pan. In my opinion, the sauce is the dish. Now I'm just going to finish the sauce with the sliced bone marrow. Oh, lovely. And just a little bit of chopped parsley. That's the sauce pretty much just going to sit there on a very low heat ready to go. Now we need to get going. We're going to just gently flour the calf's liver, seasoned flour. So it's really important that you get a lovely coating on the outside of the liver so that, that all the flavour stays within. And here we go. 
It only needs a minute, minute and a half in the pan. It's not going to take very long at all. Is it tricky cooking a piece of thin calf's liver? Because it looks thin, you, you know, it will cook quickly. You've got to get the temperature right because it will firm up and you might think it's actually cooked, but it can still be quite under. And the only way you're going to know that's cooked is just by touch and experience. OK, now I'm ready to plate. And there we have it, pan-fried calves liver, Bordelais sauce, toasty brioche. That is beautiful, isn't it? Great challenge for our chefs. It's all about the sauce, it's all about the cooking of the calves liver, but that sauce has got to be big and bold and brave and it's got to have lots of flavour. Let's do it. First to face Marcus's test is Austrian-born Nina, who works in a hotel restaurant in Nottingham. Because I was born and raised in Austria, my style of food is very much like influenced by it. Which means basically we have a lot of hearty stews and pickle. I try to use those really dishes that are pretty really, really old, probably a few hundred years, bring them back in a modern twist. The reason why I decided to enter MasterChef is simply because I just want to show that everyone can be a good chef. What I learned is you have to push yourself and stand up for yourself. Hello, Nina. Hi, nice to meet you. What I'd like you to cook for us is a pan-fried calves liver, serve mm -hmm. it with toasted brioche and a Bordelais sauce. Mm-hmm. And have you ever made a Bordelais sauce? Not really. OK, do you know what it is? I think it's a red wine reduction sauce, Bordelais wine. 15 minutes, off you go. OK. What are you starting first? The sauce first, because the liver has to be kind of pink. How long have you been cooking? I'm cooking for 13 years now. Since you were five? No, I'm 30. <laughs> Why did you become a chef? In my family, many generations are chefs. Your parents, are they chefs? My grandma and my grandgrandma. Did you meet your great-grandmother? Yeah, my mum died when I was five years old. So I was staying most of the time with her. She gave me a carrot peeler when I was, like, five years old. A carrot peeler? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't went so well. I peeled my finger off with it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> You're halfway, OK, so you've got seven minutes left. Tell me about the flour around the liver. Why'd you do that? To prevent it from sticking. You've got three minutes, Nina. OK. You going to get it done? Yep. Nina, you've only got just over a minute. Well done. Just in time. Yeah, thank you very much. I think you cooked the liver very well. You cut it into pieces, you floured it, you seasoned it, and we've got a dish here that's definitely worth eating. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much. It's a red wine sauce that needs big body in it, so you need more red wine. You could also use the brandy to flame at the beginning. And your mushrooms need to be in the sauce. Having said that, I really, really enjoyed that. I think you have a fabulous approach to the kitchen. I can't wait to try your next dish. Nina, that's really nicely cooked liver. Pink inside with a colour on the outside and a sauce that's starting to develop some really good red wine flavour. This is a job well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> Your sauce making was a bit back to front. Um, I mean, you started really well, but then you added the butter and the marrow very early. Adding the fat in the beginning, it doesn't then emulsify into the sauce. But 
the flavours you got through the sauce. It tastes delicious. We'll see you next round. Thank see you. Next you. Round. Thank you very much. I didn't expect that. <laughs> I know I got positive comment, but I want to do better and show them that I really know what I'm doing, basically, so we'll go forward. Next is James. A 30-year-old head chef working in a cafe-style deli in London. So the food that we do here is a California style with my twist. My background is modern European. Bringing my own vibe here, my own creative dishes. Service. It's kind of like being an artist when you have a blank canvas and then you have to draw something. So it's like a chef when you have a blank plate and you've got to be creative and coming up with ideas. So that's what I really enjoy. I've been working hard for the past couple of weeks, doing all my training on the classic French recipes and pestering my chefs in the kitchen. So like entering a competition and anything does come up, I can be able to deal with it. James, you can have 15 minutes, off you go. So what are we starting with? I'm going to start with the sauce canoe. Did you go to college? Um, yes, I did, yeah. And what made you become a chef? My mum wanted me to be a policeman. The guy that was supposed to take me on board wasn't available. He went on holiday. So uh, my friend started to become a chef. So I said, I'll join you. So you could have been a copper, and now you're a chef? That's right, yeah. How's the sauce coming on? I'm just adding in the jus. Then I add in the red wine. You done much sauce making? Not really, no. You're halfway, you got seven minutes. Your liver's nicely cooked. Are you happy with it? I'll say I could do a little bit more cooking. Go on, then. Go on, you've got some minutes. So... Right, let's get it all on a plate now, shall we? Well done, James. Thanks, You're in time. Well done. Thank you. You can start breathing again now, <laughs> Chef. If you can. I think you've done a very good job. But your sauce making's all back to front. Okay. And you don't put alcohol into a sauce after the stock. You put it in during the cooking of the shallots, the garlic, the bacon, so that it, it, it burns off the alcohol. Good colour across the top of your liver. I love your sauce. And definitely you've got the fruitiness of the red wine. I'm really pleased you put the bone marrow through. So not bad at all, James. Thank you. The liver, it was good to see you put it back to, to cook when you found that it was slightly under. It's rich, it's, it's tasty, you've got the mushrooms and, and the bacon running through it. So, yeah, I'm really pleased. Well done. Thank you very much. The sauce is missing brandy, but it's still a very, very tasty sauce with a beautifully cooked piece of liver. You need to just home in on those sauce-making skills. Well done. We'll see you next round, shall we? Thank you, yeah. Cheers, Thank Chef. You. Thank you. The first time I ever felt like that. I was so nervous at the beginning, but I'm extremely happy that I got positive comments from the judges. So, yeah. Last up is 22-year-old Tom, senior sous chef at a fine dining pub restaurant in Loughborough. Being a chef's amazing. You have to be crazy to do it, but it's like nothing else. If you don't love the industry, then you will never, ever succeed in it. If you want to get to the top, you've really got to sacrifice everything. I've always had high standards. 
everywhere I've worked, it's been an established restaurant with either AA or Michelin. I think my style is quite quirky and just different. Very natural, but seasonal. When I was younger, you used to take criticism to heart, but when you get older and a bit more mature, you just realise that they're doing it to teach you and for you to learn. And once you've something like that's happened, you'll never do it again. Good to meet you, Tom. Thank you, and you? You look very nervous. I am. Yeah? You've yeah. cooked some carved liver, liver before? Yeah. Good. And you've made a Bordelais sauce? Yeah. 15 minutes, Tom, off you go. What made you become a chef? Honestly, I didn't do too great at school, so I didn't have a lot of options to do, really. So I had a good go at it and went to catering college and just really enjoyed it. Are you feeling better now you're cooking? I still feel a little bit nervous. Standing next to you three is one of the most nerve-wracking things I think I've ever done. What sort of food are you cooking at this restaurant? Well, it's on a farm, so we use a lot of, like, we grow our own vegetables and rare our own animals and stuff, so... You are halfway, OK, Tom, so you've got seven minutes left. Anything else going to go into it? I should have put pancetta on, so I need to get some pancetta. Funny what nerves do to you, isn't it? Yeah. So what are you going to do now, then? Do it in a separate pan, drain them off, then add them to the sauce. Five minutes left, Tom. Two and a half minutes, Tom. Yep. Tom, about a minute to go, Chef. What do you need to do, please? Uh, just pass off the pancetta, put it through the sauce. Come on in. Is it OK? Yeah, I'd say so. All done. Time's up. Thank you. I floured my liver, but you didn't without the flour. There's a possibility that a lot of the moisture and the flavour can run away. OK. The sauce is missing brandy. The bone marrow was there to enrich in the sauce. You could also use the brandy to flame at the beginning. You've got a really good, rich red wine flavour running through your sauce, which is good. The parts of your liver that are nicely cooked and the thicker part of it is just a little bit on the undersides. But overall, there is a dish there that, that, that we can eat. I like the thin bits of the liver. They're perfect for me. The fat bits are a little under. Your brioche for me, slightly over. I'm getting bitter, dark bits. The sauce really liked the fact that you realised it was missing the lardons and then making the effort to, to get them back into the sauce. You were so nervous and I think you, you've given it a good go, Tom. Thank you. Tom, pretty good start. Look forward to seeing you in the next round. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Cheers. It's a lot harder than I ever thought it was going to be. Yeah, I think they can see some uh, there. It's a bit of potential, maybe, hopefully. There's real promise from the three chefs that cooked your liver. The three chefs that attempted your razor clams, serious question marks. Two of the chefs managed to, to cook the razor clams, but only one of them was edible. And then the sauce making uh, leaves a lot to be desired. I was very happy with what I had. I thought the chefs all delivered cooked liver, all edible, all with sauce, all with brioche. That's all one can ask for. I think the signature round always tells us a little bit more about them. Let's hope they're good. Welcome back to our kitchen. This time, you're cooking a dish of your choosing, your signature dish. 
This dish is going to show us a little bit about you and who you are. And I'm very excited to see what it is you're going to cook for us. One hour and 15 minutes to cook your signature dish. At the end of this, three of you will be leaving us. Chefs, let's cook. I've been cooking from a very young age, always loved being in the kitchen. I need to now show them what I can really do, show them that my age will not affect my performance. What are you cooking for us? So I'm doing pan-fried lamb with different textures of cauliflower. I've also got a red currant jus and with a potato fondant. Listen, I'm really intrigued because your love is pastry. Yeah. So tell me why we're not getting a sweet dish from you. I want to impress without using my pastry seals first. I didn't think in the time that I had I'd have enough time to do a proper pastry dish. You looked a little bit down in the last round. What did you say to yourself? How, how, are, how are you feeling? I told myself to forget about it, to learn from it, and to now show what I really can do. Good luck. Thank you. Lamb, she's taking it off the bone, so she has to be very careful that she doesn't scorch the meat too much. Love the idea of the cauliflower puree. Burnt cauliflower, you've got to be very careful it's not too burnt. You want to make sure it's just right, otherwise it's going to get really bitter. Lamb with cauliflower works very well. And I think it can take a bit of sweetness, but I'm not sure the red currant jus is the one the, that you want to add into this dish. Only thing I have to prove today is that my food tastes great and looks great and that I can do great things using very simple and humble ingredients. Hey, Aviv, how, how are you doing? I am better now, thank you. What are you going to be making for us today? I'm going to be making a tenderloin of lamb, seasoned with Russell Hanout, Moroccan spice mix, garnished with a bit of lamb sweetbreads, and a salad made of chopped lamb kidneys, Jerusalem artichoke puree, and it's going to be finished uh, with the lamb juice. What's the inspiration behind the dish? My father is a meat supplier back in Israel, and he used to take me to this, like, real meat, a restaurant and they have the most amazing lamb sweetbreads on a skewer and this flavor is like in my palate for the rest of for the rest of my life I really like the sounds of Aviv's dish using resolute and the lamb offal the lamb sweetbread needs to be cooked just right Jerusalem artichoke needs to have the maximum amount of flavor it needs to be smooth and velvety if I had anywhere to be concerned is possibly the use of the red wine very few chefs have managed to pull off a good red wine sauce that's worked well with lamb. Working at my current place, we kind of focus on quite simple dishes with first with flavours, and that's how I came up with my signature dish. So today I'll be doing sea bream that'll be marinated in black garlic, butter fried sprouting broccoli that'll be coated in seasoned flour, spinach and avocado, puree, brown shrimp, and uh, tomato salsa. This sounds experimental to me. So this is my idea, my creation, trying to create my own identity. I don't want to be like the rest. I want to be a bit different and, yeah, come up with my own cuisine, hopefully. Wow. Wow, really? Yeah. James, I'm very curious. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Black garlic is a big, strong flavour. What I don't want is for the black garlic to overpower that beautiful piece of sea bream. I think there's another thing on this dish that's quite unusual, and that's the avocado. Let's just see how an avocado will work with sea bream that's got a lot of black garlic going around it. You're halfway, chefs. Tom's dish is all about a variety of different cabbages done in many, many different ways. We have little points of difference with the bacon and the mussels. And the cod itself is wrapped in cabbage leaf as well. So this really is a cabbage dish with the addition of cod. I like cabbage, yeah. Can't beat cabbage. <laughs> I really love this dish. For me, it's seasonal on a plate. This is my style down to a tea, really. How many different types of kale you, uh, and cabbage are you doing? Roasted hispy cabbage, uh, white cabbage, some pickled white cabbage as well, tender stem broccoli and kale. Is it because of where you're at, where you're surrounded by a farm and, and you're using the vegetables from, from Yeah, there? like when you've got a mass amount of different cabbages in the field, 
they need using up, so... Tom, you're cooking the fish in the cabbage? Yes. How do you know that the fish is cooked properly? Uh, I've got a time for it, but obviously each bit of cod's different, so... until we've cut into it... Risky. Yeah, very risky. Good luck to you. Thank you. I love this dish quite a lot. It's like my baby, basically. <laughs> it's a very traditional Austrian dish. It's quite old and I just want to change it, bring it back in a modern way so everyone can enjoy it as I did. What are you making? It would be a herb and potato crust of beef tenderloin, apple cider and horseradish reduction. Then we have a vegetable ruby cube. Did you say potato rubies cube? Yeah. Root vegetables, root vegetables cube. So I will cut them like cubes, I'll pickle them and then put them back together. Why do you want to show us Austrian food? Because every time you say Austrian food, everybody thinks schnitzel and stuff like this, but there's more to it. How do I say good luck in Austrian? <laughs> Viel Glück. Viel Glück? Thank you. <laughs> okay. She's making a potato puree and then spreading it onto a tray and baking it. And then she's taking that and wrapping it around the beef. Really interesting idea. I'm curious whether it's going to remain crispy. Nina's planning to make a Rubik's Cube out of root vegetables. They've got to be cut beautifully well. It sounds like a very interesting dish and I'm intrigued by its presentation. It looks like Nina has dropped her tray of, of the potato twill. That's going to cost her some time to try and make this again. I slipped and it landed on the floor, but I have a backup. I want to prove that I'm not just a young lad with a big head. I want to see how good I actually am. I don't want someone saying after a Saturday night service, oh, you're good at cooking, you. I want to see. Idols can say it to me. What is your dish, Avraj? Roasted halibut, tomato sausage, which is a French smoked sausage, white fish sauce, diced vegetables, coriander oil, and salty fingers. Salty fingers? Yeah. Is that what we get afterwards? or, or No, you... it's uh, oh. a little sea veg. Do you serve that fish with that sauce in the restaurant you work? No, not at the restaurant, no. So this is purely what you love to cook and eat? This is purely what I love to cook and eat. So what do you want now? Smiles on your face is about the dish. You happy, oh, Marcus? I'm very happy. As long as it tastes good, yeah. that'll make us happy. Thank, Thank you. you. When halibut is cooked beautifully, it should be wonderful and golden, and it just flakes away. It's a beautiful, meaty fish. The cream sauce with vermouth has got a real good depth of flavour and works very, very well with fish. And especially if you've got a little bit of spicy pork sausage running through it too. Chefs, you have three minutes to go. You've got to start plating up now. You have one minute left. Thirty seconds. Nina, you've got to get something on a plate. That's it. Stop. Your time's up. Stop. First up is James, whose signature dish is pan-fried sea bream with black garlic marinade, topped with brown shrimp and tomato salsa. On a bed of spinach, served with avocado puree, buttermilk fried broccoli, and rapeseed oil. The fish has caught around the edges where it's quite bitter, doesn't look appealing, it's been burnt, and I find it quite under-seasoned as well. The way it's been served with the salsa on top of the fish, the, the oil is just poured out, so I'm finding it really greasy. I like the black garlic sweetness, but I'm also getting a taste of burnt. I like your avocado mousse. There's a sweetness to it. I like some of it, not all of it. I do like the light avocado. The salsa brings a freshness to the dish. It's not fine dining and it's not refined. 
and you're going to need to do that if you push forward in the competition. A little bit disappointed. The fish, I could have done better. But it was fun. Nerve-wracking, but fun. Avraj has made pan-roasted halibut served with smoked morteau pork sausage, diced vegetables, salty fingers, a white fish vermouth sauce, and coriander oil. I quite like that, my friend. I think it's quite pretty. The fish is beautifully cooked. The vermouth sauce is cream, it's classical, it's simple in its complexity. The vegetables, I, I was looking at them and I thought they may be just a little bit on the undercooked side and they're not. It's not very inventive in, in many ways, but you've used the ingredients very, very well. I'm really, really enjoying this. I think your fish cookery is spot on. However, that sausage is really, really smoky and really, really salty. I wouldn't mind a little less of it because you've also got those salty fingers. Really like the sauce with the vermouth. The garnish is really simple but it shows me that you understand the flavours of what works together. And sometimes it's very easy to mess up something that's simple, but this works. That was just me on the plate there. That's everything I had. Next is Aviv, who has made Raz al Hanout lamb tenderloin and sweetbreads, chopped kidney, parsley and almond salad, Jerusalem artichoke puree and crisps, preserved lemon and charred lamb fat, finished with a lamb jus. You've packed a lot into this dish. You've got good lamb cookery. The sweetbreads are very nicely cooked. Didn't think the lemon would work with lamb and sweetbread, but it does because you've brined it. I think if I was eating it in a restaurant, I'd find it intriguing. It's sort of almost cutting edge in its own sort of way. I quite like that. The lamb itself, the kidneys and the sweetbread, for me, cooked brilliantly. You've got sweetness coming from the masala sauce. I find the whole thing absolutely delightful. The sweetbread is my favourite thing on this plate. Also, I really enjoy the confit lemon. All together, it eats well. I love your ideas. Thank you very much. I love cooking this dish for them. I'm really, really happy about the comments. Personally, I feel I did redeem myself, but my opinion doesn't really count. Rhiannon's signature dish is pan-fried fillet of lamb, served with potato fondant, burnt cauliflower, pickled cauliflower, spiced cauliflower puree, grilled asparagus, and a red currant jus. The lamb, I would send that back. That's far too rare for me. I particularly like the charred bits of cauliflower you get. That gives a smoky charring that I think is really nice. But the execution of the lamb and the fondant, both of those things are undercooked. The sauce is also really, really sweet. The cauliflower puree for the spice is nice. The fondant is really cooked on the outside, slightly under on, in the middle. I like rare meat. For me, that's, that's under. If you could have taken all these ingredients to where they could have gone, that would have been a great plate of food. Where's your going? were fair. Completely agree. The lamb was under. I'll learn from it, though. For his signature dish, Tom has made poached cod loin wrapped in cabbage on a bed of cabbage puree, served with roasted hispy cabbage, pickled white cabbage discs, tender stem broccoli, mussels, 
and a bacon and cream sauce. Tom, I think the dish is appalling in its presentation, but I think the dish itself is absolutely outstanding. The cabbage cookery is great. It's got crunch, it's got texture, it's got bite, it's a little bit burnt, it's got vinegar, and it works. And what makes it work is the beautiful cookery of the fish. And not only that, that sensational sauce. I think you're a star. Well done. Thank you. To take a cabbage and do that much to a cabbage, I think is very brave, very bold. I've got lovely saltness from the mussels that you've scattered around. And I find you as a chef, completely intriguing and very impressive. I like that you've decided to use as many brassicas as possible in, in different ways. I really like the hispy that was brined and then pan roasted with the mussels and the sauce and the fish. Really tasty. Thank you. All that hard work. And grafting. And they get comments like that's nice. <laughs> Bitch, you don't want to say. <laughs> Finally, it's Nina, whose Austrian inspired dish is potato and herb crusted beef tenderloin, potato dumplings pickled root vegetable Rubik's cube, green sorrel gel, and a horseradish and apple sauce. You are seriously racing against time. Mm. This probably isn't how you wanted it. No, it's not. I don't believe that you wanted the beef to be this rare. Obviously, the crust hasn't worked, it's fallen off. It's a real, real shame. The beef is raw, it's not cooked, it's raw. The sauce, apple sauce, horseradish, there's no horseradish flavour in there, and apple does not go with beef. It doesn't really work at all. I like the idea of the coloured vegetables, yet they're imperfect. You know, they should be all the same size. The plain dumpling is very heavy. I'm just um, disappointed it hasn't worked out. Basically, my own fault. <laughs> it was just a mistake. I could have had nothing on a plate in the end, which would have been even worse. Some really great dishes and some really silly mistakes. Right, we've got to choose three to go through to the next round and three to go home. I really like Tom. Tom did a decent liver in the skills test, and then he gave us that incredible cod with the cabbage. The fish was beautifully cooked. The sauce brought the whole dish together. And what you had with the cabbage, you had textures. Overall, I thought it was a great plate. So are we agreed? Can we put Tom through? Absolutely. There was another chef that I think impressed today, and that was Aviv. The lamb was nice and pink. I love the sweet bread with the razzalanu. I just found every mouthful, seriously, guys, delicious. Aviv has got a lot to show us, and I'm really excited about his style and his point of difference. Brilliant. So that's Aviv gone through, right? I want to talk about Rhiannon, because mistakes were, were piling up. Rhiannon's lamb was undercooked, her fondant was undercooked. Even the sauce to go with the lamb was far too sweet for me. Quite frankly, I, I feel a bit sorry for her. I want Rhiannon to, to go back and learn from this and come back a stronger chef. Can I tell you who really, really disappointed me? And that was Nina. For me, the dish was just littered with lots of errors. The beef was raw, the crust didn't work. The pickled vegetables loved the colours, but they were all different sizes. <laughs> Such a shame. So, despite a promising start, Nina's leaving the competition? Absolutely. James is an interesting chef. He seems to be an original thinker. I personally like James's dish. A black garlic was an interesting touch to put with the sea bream. It worked a treat, but it was not refined. The oil going everywhere, for me, just made it really greasy. But in saying that, you know, I really loved the way the fish was cooked. I really liked Alvarage's dish. It was classical and the vegetables were beautifully cooked. I had salty smoked sausage. 
I had salty fingers, a little bit salty for me. I thought Avraj's uh, dish was delicious. There was nothing exciting about it, but it was just solid, good cookery. I put my heart on that plate, so if I go home, say fair play to everyone who's uh, carrying on. If I go through, I'd be delighted, I'd probably faint. I would love to continue and show the judges my cooking skill. We can't put them both through. We have to make a decision. Who's got the most promise, James or Avraj? There were two chefs today that we thought did incredibly well and are going straight through to the next round. Tom, Aviv, congratulations, chefs. Great cooking. Well done. Rhiannon, Nina, sorry, chefs, you are leaving us. Right. Gentlemen, Avraj, James, obviously we have one place left in the next round. The chef going through to the next round. Is Avraj. James, great effort, thank you. I'm a bit disappointed not going through. It's been fun, it's been nerve-wracking. I enjoyed myself, it's been a good experience. Gutted in a way. I think I let myself down on the day. Just gotta learn from it and then take what I've learned and go far with it. Of course, I'm a little bit disappointed because I know I can cook. I think it's fair that I'm leaving it at this stage. Well done, you three. You are quarter-finalists. I'm on cloud nine. I've been given another chance. I'm going to take it by a scruff of the neck. Definitely hungry for more. I've got a load of tricks on my sleeve. Can't wait to bring them all out. I feel very good. Today was a big step forward, but it's just one step. There is a lot more to take. Next time, it's the quarter-final and the best chefs return to prove they have what it takes. The sauce is big, it's bold, it's massive in flavor. Those who deliver will earn the right to cook for the critics. The smell is fantastic. I've got to say I'm incredibly excited.